This is the follow-up to my previous video, the CTMU explained in 8 minutes or less. And in this video, video, I'm just going to try to go through some more advanced concepts in the CTMU to bring you up to speed, I suppose. So, a set is a mathematical model for a collection of objects. And any object can be considered a set. And the biggest set, I, which is the biggest mathematical object collection of collection of objects with a real correlate is the universe itself but and this is what Bertrand Russell fi figured out the problem of self-inclusion is termed Russell's paradox because what Bertrand Russell figured out is that if you have a set and that with if you have the set which contains all smaller sets there must be a larger power set which contains that very set. So that's the paradox of self-conclusion of self-inclusion. So if we're going to define the universe as a set of all sets, what we're essentially saying is that it the universe or the model of the universe, which is syntactically identified with the universe itself, is to, can, contains itself and therefore generates itself. So the so the and the CTMU does this through two processes, one called co-inversion and one called inconversion. And this is based off the multiplex unity principle, which says that the universe contains its contents, but also that the contents contain its universe, that there's a two-way mapping. So the, there's a mapping from the global structure of reality to its contents, which is called topological containment, whereby each point within the universe mirrors the mirrors the structure of the global system at large and therefore is contained within it and this is and also has the same rules and structure as all the other points in the universe and so that's topological containment so that's the the larger set the universe containing the contents but the contents also contain the universe through co-inversion which is descriptive containment which means that through co-inversion, which is descriptive containment, which means that the contents also contain the universe by virtue of that two-way of that two-way mapping. That if you take if you take the set of all of the contents, then that actually contains the set itself. So it's so it's a two-way mapping, which makes sure that the universe as a set contains itself and conspansion which is defined in the ctmu as the evolution of the universe occurs in two stages the first is internal expansion which is associated with the incoversion phase and then requantization and each of which is associated with the co-inversion phase so inner expansion comes from the mapping between from the global structure to to the points and then requantization comes when the when the set of transformation apl applied to all those points then reshapes the the lattice of the universe and so this is the same this is the same concept as the quantum wave function collapse in in quantum mechanics is that you have in between states you have a probabilistic function whereby whereby particles exist in a superposition which can collapse into one of any number of states and then upon observation it collapses into a single definite state but because of the the two stages of evolution the inner expansion and requantization from the point of view of the contents it actually it, it the universe appears as though it's getting larger and this is the current assumption in theoretical physics but this is absurd because the question of, arises is that what is the universe expanding into because the universe contains itself and can't be defined by anything external to it and from the universe's point of view its contents are getting smaller so the so these two 
but these are two this is a false dichotomy between the expansion of the universe and the contraction of its content because conspansion the evolution is neither the expansion of the universe or the shrinking of its content but it's the design it's design and actualization and therefore the model of causality and evolution of passing from one state to the next so p so the current assumption in quantum mechanics is that the behavior of particles is truly random because that's what it appears because there's this probabilistic function but and so we, but if we grant this then we have no explanation for the higher order coherence of the universe with biological life and galaxy clusters and all these things which couldn't possibly have arisen by chance um you know clusters and you know on earth we have mowed lawns and skyscrapers and we have this human causation too so the ctnu says that cause it and we have this tendency is because at the at the at the present at the lowest level strata of matter at the quantum level things appear as though they're random and at the highest level if you look at the entire space time manifold it appears as though they're entirely deterministic um but the but even though at the highest level it appears deterministic we've found that the laws of physics aren't sufficient to determine quantum behavior and this is the problem with constructing a unified field theory which unifies relativity and quantum mechanics so the ctm but the ctmu says that causality isn't isn't you know random or totally determined because determ determinacy amounts to that there are prior constraints on reality which are outside of reality which isn't possible because if they were reality self constrains but it's not constrained by anything external to it it can't be a deterministic thing it can't we're not just you know puppets by something unreal um so so it's not ran so it's ra not random or determined but it's actually a telic which comes from the greek for telos which means purpose or end that the structure and by virtue of the closure of reality the structure and evolution of the universe are determined by the universe itself. And so in between states, particles only exist as potential. Um, that they, that in between observations, the, the particles only exist as this kind of probabilistic function which can collapse into any number of states is what we found from the from the developments in quantum mechanics in the last century and because but in the ctmu causality which is what causes those particles to actually collapse into into a given state is determined by what's called telic recursion where the intention of tellers and we'll get into what that is in a moment distributes programming from the future to the past bit and collapses that potential into a state so actually the the men the mental intention of the of the three strata of tellers collapse that potential into the state but and that but they also generate all the entire timeline between the current state and its intention so you can think of for reality making a plan to drive to chick-fil-a and get food and this might seem like a silly or ir irrelevant example, but reality has actually performed this function many millions of times. So we have, so we have a two tier two tier model of causation. Is that in in standard causality theory, you know, I take this and I throw my shirt on the floor, and that causes it to to fall. And in one sense, that's right. But also, I had to generate the intent. I also had to generate the intention, and then, and then create a timeline by which I could do that. And that's actually future to past pro programming. That the, the telos of my shirt ending up on the floor is actually distributing programming, back. Back to the timeline. So the past to future, 
and the which is the advanced the past to future which is the you know kind of retarded model of causation is what langan calls it meets at and meets at the terminus of the future to past which is the advanced model of causation to generate the next state so so this happens at three levels of tellers to most generally is the global operator descriptor or god for short as the global identity of reality which is responsible for its own which freely determines its own structure and evolution of the universe um call and these are this and god is called the the primary teller because all all causation is internal to god god is is the meta causation so the higher the highest order of causation so and then humans and other sentient agents within the universe who inherit the self-generative freedom of god yet within you know kind of locality constraints and cognitive structure you know i can't you know th will that a mountain will move and it will and it will go hither but but the but by virtue of the incoversive mapping between god and humans where we subsist as localized images of him and inherit some of and inherit his global global structure that the universe is actually freely created by sentient agents existing within it so everything begins as internal reality in kind of begins as internal reality to god but is then externalized through local perceptors within reality so this is some some say that it's possible that there could have been a universe which didn't develop life or consciousness or conscious living beings but this is actually false and this was and this was put forth not by lang and it was it's supported by lang but it's put forth by the celebrated physicist john archibald archibald wheeler he coined something called the participatory universe principle or which is a stronger version of the anthropic principle, which essentially says that physics gives that physics gives rise to sentient agents within the universe. Sentient agents within the universe give rise to information, and information gives rise to physics. So it's a closed loop. It's a the universe is a self-excited circuit that is perceiving itself and modeling itself for its own purposes. And that, and that the, and that humans or and other sentient agents within the universe, if there if there are others, um, are are actually are actually integral parts of reality. And this is a big part of what Chris Langan says will be a big shift in the in our worldview upon the acceptance of the CTMU is that humans will no longer be viewed as, as, you know, chemical scum supervening on physical, on brute physical processes, but actually necessary and important ingredients of reality itself. So, so the universe evolves by hological self-replication this is almost a meta-darwinian message that it's natural selection happening at the cosmic scale is what chris langan says um for for through telic recursion through and uh, through you know potentials being distributed back to states and vice versa through this fee through this cross-temporal feedback between syntax between rules and structure and states between between the incoversive and co and coinversive mappings so that that cross temporal feedback is so for but it evolves for the purpose of freely willed perception and it's constantly getting better and the the logos which is or the 
metaformal system, which is the language by which the, the universe self models is actually a generalization of, of perception. And it's essentially what, what call, what calls, and in the, in its human form, in its human form, it's what calls sentient agents to carry out the telos of reality, which is what Coronius Focus, which is another CTMU adjacent channel, says is that the, the logos essentially becomes truthful perception manifested in, in the universe and this, and that, that forms the basis of the ethical vision of the CTMU. So it, so it's the, the ability to interact with the universe in a positive way across times and thus to internally sense and control itself is the purpose of the universe at large and humans instantiation within it. So the next, the next topic I'd like to, or actually uh, I'm going to, I'm going to close this video off in the next video. We're going to touch on info cognition, telesis, the, in the next few videos, the genesis of the physical universe, the role, uh, the relationship between language and reality. Um, but until then, you know, pe peace be with you. Um, let the light shine forth in the darkness. May the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.